Hello, this is Emma. I hope you're doing really, really well. This week marks the eight year anniversary of this channel. So, this is a 3DO sort of nostalgic 3DO video for you. I used to have the one with the white ears. the pro one now, but um, I was thinking the other day back to all the different stages of learning how to use equipment and trying out all the new, all the different types of microphones and learning how to edit and all of that and I remembered when I got my first 3 do microphone and at the time this microphone was all very new to the ASMR community and so before we started recording binaurally which is this microphone is, it's a binaural microphone. We were recording in stereo, either with a zoom a recorder that has the two microphones in the XY position at the top, or something similar. And Maria had started recording in stereo with the two microphones either side of the camera foot apart and um, I can't remember what year that was I'm sure you know some of you will know I believe that uh, a viewer had helped her to set that up and it was quite Call at the time. <laughs> Going ear to ear, a bit towards the camera. It's very intimate and new. Changed everything, didn't it? And I remember early on, I was thinking. I was trying to find different ways of recording and everyone was trying to do new things and uh, think of new triggers and new styles and I saw the 3 d online and was learning about binaural recording and um, I found the 3DO microphone on online, but it was really expensive. <laughs> and then I think it was a week after I'd found it, or a couple of weeks, and the feather got on. And um, I remember she did a a binaural test on her channel and I was so excited to hear it I had a mixture of feelings because I thought oh I really wanted one of those <laughs> and then just really happy that um, she'd got one 
and we could all hear what it was like and um, it was a really exciting time because there were so many different possibilities with um, techniques that we could bring into ASMR and the sky was the limit at the time and any time anyone did anything new it was really exciting. Or brought any technique into the community. It was exciting. I remember spending weeks on end trying to learn how to film in 3D, not 3D sound but 3D camera with the glasses and um, I had a camcorder that had some sort of 3D capability, it was a really cheap one but still I just couldn't get it to work and of course you would have needed a 3D television and but um, I thought that it would be really cool to come up to the camera like this and if it was on a TV you would be out of the TV. <laughs> but I didn't have the skills or the knowledge or experience at the time but I did my best. <laughs> so... Eventually... I was lucky enough to get hold of a 3DO and I'd seen that um, Heather had made a video of hers changing the battery inside and you could see the microphone on camera and I saw that and thought, there must be a way that we could use this microphone but um, utilise the actual ears, not just use it to record binaurally but actually utilise the fact that it has ears and I thought ear cleaning doing things to the ears and I was trying to work out how to do that without having the microphone on the on screen because at the time I thought that it might be unprofessional <laughs> to have the equipment on show <laughs> which sounds ridiculous now everyone has a microphone in front of them now. Um, so I made a video with it in front of me, like this. Um, but I turned it round because I thought that it wouldn't be good to see the back workings of it. So the sound was back to front and there were lots of comments saying when you go to this ear, it's in the that was me thinking I was being professional <laughs> and um, I think I did a couple of videos like that afterwards but I always tried to cover the microphone with a scarf or I remember decorating it with feathers and things like that and of course I did an ear cleaning video which um, got lots of compliments. I felt really good that I tried something new. And um, contributed something. And then after that, there were loads and loads of videos of the 3 d in front of you. 
so I stopped doing it because every time I did it there were loads of comments saying I'd copied off someone and and, uh, and I just wanted to just keep on trying new things all the time so I didn't have it like this for years perhaps every now and again so when I sit like this with the 3 do in front of me like this it feels quite nostalgic so quite fitting for a channelversary video of course I remember doing a video making different sounds with it like this doing that as well and doing this across the top Oh, and um, with the headphones over the ears as well. I did that once too. And tapping on the top of the headphones like that. And that became a bit of a thing too. It was an exciting time to start an ASMR channel at the time. There was me and quite a few others that were sort of... Um, you could call the new wave, I guess, of creators. We weren't part of the original Whispering community. Um, we came along just before his mob became popular. And certainly it's nowhere near as popular as it is now. So it was a time where everyone was trying new things and every new video seemed to be something new and a new trigger and a new idea around the time it would have been ASMR requests and Ella Feather ASMR Angel people like that around the same time as me. A bit longer maybe, a little bit. Sort of 2012, 2013. Of course now, it's known everywhere. At that time as well, if anybody was interviewed by the media, it was a really huge thing to appear on a newspaper article or something online and even more huge to do a TV or news appearance, it was massive and the whole community tuned in. And it was very, very difficult to um, do that kind of thing at the time. It's still not that easy, but um, at the time it was nerve-wracking. And um, there 
there was a lot of judgment around that um, outside of the community the perception of ASMR was that it was a really weird thing and uh, sexual as well. I had people in my local community even that said strange things to me quite a lot. And then if ever I did anything, you know, an interview or whatever, it was always one of the first questions. It was kind of a novelty, a novelty um, article. Who's this weirdo sort of thing. So you had to have quite a bit of strength and courage to do that. And there were people who disagreed that some artists were doing that too. Which I understood. I sort of agree with both sides. And I've changed my mind across the years. Whether it's a good idea or not. But I do think it is ultimately. Because I've noticed that every time I've done something. Like an interview or a TV thing. That... Um, People either start their own channels because they've just learned about it or become viewers and they write and they comment and say, I would never have known about this if it wasn't for such and such an article. And I do believe that if you know about something good or better to share. I'm glad I found out about ASMR. So, I know how it feels to find out about it. If you are a, an ASMR experiencer as well, or have been all your life, it's really special. So, really have much of a plan for this video apart from <laughs> just this really but I decorated the background in sparkles and I'm wearing a sparkly jumper for the occasion there's another video which is of the early videos are made private because um, well over the years sometimes I've looked and been really cringy about them <laughs> and uh, made them private and then others I've given out to personal details and things because when you first or when I first made the channel didn't think many people were watching so it didn't really matter and then I realised I had given away personal details that weren't very clever online. <laughs> Jumper. 
sleeves. Crunching against the rim. Let's see if I just discovered a new trigger. Now, of course, the binaural ear microphones, and there are quite a few different um, brands doing these types of microphones now. People have done amazing things with them as well and expanded even more. Covered them in plastic and them in water and foam <laughs> and picks inside the ears and all kinds of things I mainly just use this now for live events the last time I used it was in March last year for the event in Australia in, on the Gold Coast, the um, Gold Coast Film Festival, and uh, we filmed it and I have all the footage and I was going to release the video soon after but with everything that happened and that's still happening, I didn't think it appropriate to video out with audience people and hugging and crowds <laughs> but I'll do it I thought I'd give it leave it a while first but that feels like a, a world away now So binaural recording on a binaural microphone, what that means is two microphones, ear distance apart, in ears preferably, so that the microphone hears like a human head spatially so on the side sometimes you see the actual head sometimes I, um, I recorded once with the Neumann head the big one and I know uh, it's more magic as a head as well sure which um, brand it is but she decorates it doesn't she with glitter and things but that's binaural too so anything with ears or ear distance apart with actual ears is best because you have all the folds of the ear and the sound behaves like it does when it goes into our own ears because the folds of your ears play a part in how you hear the sound and how you process the sound waves into your eardrum So anything else with two microphones like this, or two microphones like that, or is there another way there's X, Y, there's a foot apart, and um, there's pointing the 
this way, out with or in with. That's all stereo. And of course, one microphone is mono. Directional, which is all the way around as well, and I know that this company do a microphone which is good for live events with ears all the way around it. But for ASMR, that many microphones means more white noise. That's why I like to record in stereo. The microphones I have because they have a very low white noise, self noise. You can control the quality of the actual microphones you're using. They're condenser microphones. He gave me this microphone, and it's an expensive one too. I think because after Heather started using it and I did, others were buying them as well and they became really popular. to do live events with. So this is the Pro and it has the two XLR outputs at the bottom. This means I have more control over the recording. my microphones into a mix pre six which is really good to record anywhere. Good quality sound. Uh, 
Hayley Whispering Rose, she used to call it Thunder Ears. with a glittery background and a glittery jumper. Lots of love. And if you're still listening, thank you. I love you. Thank you to all those people wherever in the world you are you've been sticking around checking in on this channel from time to time or watching the videos every time thank you I'm a little bit like Nanny McPhee people come along until they don't need me anymore see what types of videos I'm making then and who's watching. <laughs> I wonder if YouTube will still exist then. See you soon.